Have you ever wondered about the role of women in the early Christian movement? It's a question that may not come up often, but when we delve into the pages of history and scripture, we discover a tapestry rich with the contributions of women. These were women who, despite living in a time when their voices were often overlooked, left their mark in ways that continue to resonate today. One such area where their influence was felt was in the early Christian movement. The inception of Christianity saw numerous women playing pivotal roles, emerging as leaders, patrons, and even missionaries. They were the silent pillars, holding up the burgeoning faith with their devotion, courage, and tenacity. Yet their stories are often left untold, their contributions overshadowed by the more prominent figures of the time. This doesn't diminish their importance, however. In fact, it only adds to the intrigue and the desire to pull back the veil of time and bring their stories to the forefront. One such woman, whose story is a testament to the strength and resilience of women in early Christianity, was Lydia. She was a woman of trade, a successful businesswoman who navigated the world of commerce with finesse, but she was also a woman of deep faith whose heart was open to the teachings of the gospel. Her story is one that bridges the gap between commerce and faith, highlighting the diverse roles that women played in the early Christian movement. Lydia was more than just a believer, she was a pillar of the early church. Her home served as a sanctuary for other believers, a place where faith was nurtured and the Christian community was strengthened. Her story is a testament to the power of faith, the strength of women, and the indomitable spirit of the early Christian community. So let's dive into the story of Lydia, the pioneering businesswoman and pillar of the church. Let's explore her journey, her faith, and her legacy. It's time to shine a light on the unspoken women of the early Christian movement, and there's no better place to start than with Lydia. One such woman who was a successful businesswoman and a devoted follower of Christ was Lydia. Lydia hailed from Thyatira, known for its luxury purple dye industry. Nestled in the ancient region of Lydia, Thyatira was a city renowned for its vibrant purple cloth. This detail is not merely incidental. Lydia was a seller of purple, as the Book of Acts tells us. This might sound simple enough, but it's actually a nod to her status and her acumen. You see, the purple dye trade was no ordinary business. It was a highly specialized industry, and a lucrative one at that. The dye was extracted from a rare species of sea snail, making it incredibly valuable. It was the color of emperors and nobility, a symbol of power, prestige, and luxury. So, to be a seller of purple was to be a savvy entrepreneur, someone with a deep understanding of trade, supply chains, and market demands. Now let's take a moment to appreciate the magnitude of this. Here was Lydia, a woman in a man's world, not just surviving but thriving. She was a successful businesswoman, commanding respect in a society that often sidelined women. And she did it all in an industry that was notoriously complex and competitive. But Lydia was more than just a successful businesswoman. She was also a spiritual seeker. The scriptures describe her as a worshiper of God. While this doesn't necessarily imply she was a Jewish convert, it does suggest an openness, a curiosity, a hunger for spiritual truth. This spiritual inclination would eventually lead her to cross paths with Paul and his message of Christianity. So what do we have so far? A successful entrepreneur, a woman of high social standing and a spiritual seeker. But Lydia was more than the sum of these parts. Her story, her journey, was just beginning. The next chapter would see her embrace a new faith and in doing so, become a pillar of the early Christian church. Lydia was no ordinary woman. She was a successful entrepreneur with a deep understanding of trade and commerce. And as we'll see in the next scene, her story was about to take an extraordinary turn. Lydia was described as a worshiper of God. This phrase, as simple as it may seem, provides a profound insight into Lydia's spiritual inclination. While Lydia was not explicitly identified as a Jewish convert in the scriptures, it's clear that she held a deep reverence for God. This reverence, or perhaps curiosity, likely led her to the teachings of Judaism, the monotheistic faith that was prominent during her time. Now, this spiritual inclination of Lydia wasn't merely a passive interest, it was an active pursuit, a yearning for divine wisdom. It was this very yearning that made her receptive to new spiritual insights and teachings. Lydia's spiritual journey was not confined to the familiar. She was open to exploring the spiritual landscapes beyond her known horizons. In this context, it's important to acknowledge that Lydia's spiritual openness was not a common trait in her society. Remember, 
we're talking about a time when religious beliefs were rigid, and deviation from established norms was often met with resistance, if not outright hostility. Yet, Lydia dared to venture into the unknown, dared to question, dared to seek, and it was this readiness to embrace a new faith that set the stage for her encounter with Paul, the apostle who was spreading the message of Christianity. When Paul spoke in Philippi, Lydia was among those who listened. The scripture emphasizes that the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. This divine intervention highlights not just Lydia's receptiveness, but also her courage to embrace a faith that was new and unfamiliar. This spiritual inclination of Lydia, her readiness to embrace the teachings of Christianity, is a testament to her spiritual strength and resilience. It is a testament to her quest for divine wisdom, a quest that was not confined by societal norms or religious boundaries. It is a testament to her spiritual journey, a journey that led her from being a worshiper of God to becoming a follower of Christ. In conclusion, Lydia wasn't just a successful businesswoman, she was a spiritual seeker, a woman of faith who dared to venture into the unknown in her quest for divine wisdom. This spiritual inclination of Lydia paved the way for her encounter with Paul and his message of Christianity. When Paul spoke in Philippi, Lydia was among those listening. This is where our story takes a significant turn, where the businesswoman from Thyatira becomes a devout follower of a new faith. Lydia was no stranger to spiritual teachings. However, the message Paul conveyed that day wasn't just another religious discourse. It was the gospel, the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. The scripture recounts this pivotal moment with profound simplicity stating, the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. This phrase, the Lord opened her heart, speaks volumes. It wasn't just a matter of Lydia being receptive or open-minded. Rather, it was a divine intervention, a supernatural act that enabled her to truly grasp the depth and significance of Paul's message. Her heart was not just opened, but was transformed, marking the beginning of her journey as a Christian. Embracing the Christian faith did not mean abandoning her business acumen or societal role. On the contrary, Lydia's conversion integrated her faith and her profession, bringing a new dimension to her life as a businesswoman. She didn't just sell purple cloth anymore, she became a vessel of God's love, spreading the message of Christ through her actions and interactions. Her conversion was not a solitary event either. The scripture tells us that her entire household was baptized alongside her. This detail underlines the influence Lydia had on those around her. As the head of her household, her decision to follow Christ set a precedent for everyone in her care. But Lydia's conversion wasn't just about embracing a new faith, it was about committing to a new community, the early Christian church. It was about using her resources, her home, and her influence to nurture this fledgling community. And it was about leading by example, demonstrating how to live out Christian values in everyday life. Lydia's conversion signifies her readiness to embrace the Christian faith. But more than that, her story is a testament to the power of divine intervention, the influence of a transformed heart, and the impact one woman can have when she integrates her faith with her life. Lydia's story does not end with her conversion. There's a pivotal moment that follows, a moment that cements Lydia's place as a cornerstone in the early Christian community. This moment revolves around Lydia's baptism and her act of hospitality. Following her acceptance of the faith, Lydia is baptized, marking her formal entry into the Christian community. But her baptism is not a solitary event. The scripture tells us that her household too was baptized. This detail is significant as it demonstrates Lydia's influence and her commitment to sharing the faith with those around her. It's a testament to her generosity, not just in sharing her physical resources, but also in sharing her newfound spiritual wealth. But Lydia's generosity does not stop there. After her baptism, she extends an invitation to Paul and his companions. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come stay at my home. This is not merely an offer of shelter and sustenance, it's an offer of fellowship, of community. It's an act of hospitality that signifies Lydia's commitment to the nascent Christian community. Lydia's home becomes more than just a dwelling. It transforms into a sanctuary for the believers, a place where the Christian community can gather, learn, and grow together. It's here, in Lydia's home, that the seeds of the church take root and flourish. Lydia, through her hospitality, has created a space for the Christian community to thrive. In doing so, Lydia showcases her leadership within the church. She's not just a member of the community, she's a pillar, she's a guide, a mentor, a beacon of faith. 
Lydia becomes a figure of influence and respect, a woman who uses her resources for the betterment of her community. Lydia's home likely became a meeting place for believers, showcasing her leadership within the church. Her story serves as a testament to the power of faith and generosity, and the profound impact one person can have on their community. Lydia's role in the church is a testament to her faith, her leadership, and her unwavering commitment to the Christian community. Lydia's story holds significance for several reasons. She stands as a testament to the power of faith and the capacity for change, breaking down the barriers of her time. Here we have a woman who not only thrived in a man's world of commerce, but also emerged as a spiritual leader in the early Christian community. Lydia shatters the stereotype of women in the biblical world. Her role as a successful businesswoman, dealing in the luxurious purple cloth, a symbol of wealth and power, is a clear indication of her acumen. She was not just a passive participant in the marketplace. She was an active player, engaging in trade negotiations, making deals, and navigating the complex world of commerce. And she did all this in a time when women were seldom seen or heard in the public sphere. But Lydia's story doesn't stop at her business successes. Her conversion to Christianity, as described in the Acts of the Apostles, demonstrates the universality of the Christian message. Lydia, a woman of trade, was moved by the words of Paul, showing that the teachings of Christianity were not confined to a particular social or professional class. They were, and still are, open to all who are willing to listen and believe. Lydia's conversion was not a quiet personal affair. It was a public declaration, a commitment to a new way of life. She was baptized along with her household, and in doing so, she became a beacon of faith in her community. Her home became a sanctuary for believers, a place where the early Christian community could gather, pray, and support one another. Lydia's story is a powerful reminder that faith can transcend social and economic boundaries. Her legacy is one of courage, resilience, and unwavering faith. She serves as a role model for all women, demonstrating that it is possible to be both a successful entrepreneur and a devoted follower of Christ. Lydia's hospitality and leadership serve as an inspiration for women in ministry and church life. Her story encourages us to strive for spiritual growth, to open our hearts to the Word of God, and to use our talents and resources to serve our communities. It is a testament to the power of faith, the value of hospitality, and the importance of community in the Christian journey. It's important to note some debates surrounding Lydia's story. As we delve deeper into the life of Lydia, it's worth mentioning that her narrative isn't without controversy. Scholars have raised questions about whether Lydia's business practices were in complete alignment with the early Christian ethical teachings. You see, Lydia was a seller of purple cloth, a luxury item in those days. The purple dye industry was highly specialized, lucrative, and in some cases, it could be exploitative. The dye was derived from a certain species of sea snails, and the extraction process was labor-intensive, often involving harsh conditions for the workers. In addition to the potential issues of labor exploitation, there were environmental concerns as well. The production of purple dye was not only resource-intensive, but also had a significant environmental impact. The extraction of dye from these sea snails could disrupt marine ecosystems and lead to ecological imbalance. These factors complicate our understanding of Lydia. On one hand, she is depicted as a successful businesswoman and a devoted follower of Christ, a pillar of the early church. On the other hand, the nature of her business raises ethical questions that cannot be ignored. However, it's essential to remember that the scriptural account of Lydia doesn't delve into these details. The focus of her narrative is not on the specifics of her trade, but on her faith, her openness to the Christian message, and her generosity towards the early Christian community. These debates about Lydia's business practices serve to remind us that the figures we encounter in Scripture are complex, just like us. They lived in specific cultural and historical contexts, and their stories can be interpreted in multiple ways. Regardless of these debates, Lydia's story undoubtedly celebrates her faith, generosity, and the vital role she played in the early church. Her story continues to inspire countless individuals, particularly women, who find in Lydia a model of entrepreneurial acumen, spiritual devotion, and leadership within the faith community. Thank you for watching Glorious Tube channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share, and press the notification button.